In 2003, Daniel Lipskin was awarded as the official architect for the World Trade Center Memorial Masterpiece. There was a lot of debates at the time on whether or not this was the best design for this specific site. But people were comparing design with the real reason why this architect, this particular architect, won a competition. Because in reality, he hadn't been chosen for his sketches, he had been chosen for his story and for who he was. So with this example, I want to show you how great architects can create a story around their characters in order to win more competition and therefore make their idea a reality. Welcome to Architect on Steroids, the channel that shows you how to win architectural projects using famous architects' techniques. And today we are going to learn how to tell a story like a star architect. How you can tell a story that gets remembered, how you can tell a story that lights up emotion and makes you look like the best option for your projects. Because I often see architects, designers or even real estate developers focusing too much on the design itself. But then, after presenting the project to the client or the jury they try to convince, they sometimes end up disappointing, not knowing why they haven't been chosen, despite a great design. So even though so, every project is different, I've tried to understand why, despite a great design, it's sometimes not enough. So I looked at famous architects and how they are presenting their projects. And I found the answer looking at Lipskin's presentation for the 9-11 Memorial Master Plan in New York. And what I found struck me, because during this short 5 minutes presentation, he spent the first two minutes, so almost half the time, not talking about the project at all. Which amazed me because for an architectural presentation, we usually start right away talking about why we chose this color instead of this color or this shape instead of this shape. But this guy didn't do that at all and still won a competition, so knowing he has been chosen made me think that there was something to be learned from that. So let me show you what I found. So during the first two minutes, we start talking about the drawings. Is reframing the way people are going to judge this project. Let me explain. He did not want to only be judged on the design itself, and this was too risky. He wanted to add another option for the jury to choose from, and in this case, his goal was to look like the most suited guy for this specific site. So, all along his presentation, he's going to connect his life to the World Trade Center project. And you're gonna see in the next clip how he starts his sentence. Despite the fact he has been living in Germany for years, he wants his audience, which is mainly from New York, to remember that he's also a New Yorker, that he's part of the same community. So New let's York. take a look. And let me share with you just a few thoughts I had, because I often think, how did this project develop? You know, I moved to Berlin. I'm a New Yorker from the Bronx, but I moved to Berlin. So did you see how he was going to tell his speech about his life in Berlin? But as I said, he wants to be seen as the most suited guy for this project. And in this case, the project is happening in New York. So he doesn't care much about the design at that moment. He wants to be seen as someone that knows the city. And starting by saying, I've been living in Berlin for years, doesn't make your audience, in this case New Yorkers, connect to you. You would just be seen as an opportunist. And he knew that, so he reminded people that he's also a New Yorker and he even added details, saying, I'm from the Bronx. So this is the first technique. It's pretty easy, you could and should use that too for your projects. Even if you haven't lived where your project is, try to find links between you and your project so you can give your client some logic and a reason to choose you over someone else. You need quite logic when you think about it. It's like, let's say you want to go to an Indian restaurant. You want Indian food, so you find an Indian restaurant, you come in, and none of the workers are Indian, not even the chef. It's gonna feel strange, right? It just, it just doesn't feel right. It's like, who cares if they're Indian, but at the same time, why are they Indian? Same thing with architecture. It's like, who cares if the guy that's gonna build the building knows the city? But at the same time, why should we trust him? Why not choosing someone that has an actual link with the city? And famous architects know that. Look in the next clip of Norman Foster, which is a great architect also, but he's not Mexican, he's never lived in Mexico, but he was asked to design the new Mexico City's airport. And look how he found a connection between his life and the project. Let's see if you can get it. Since the age of 18, when I joined the Royal Air Force, I've been fascinated by flight. For me, flight, aviation, is another passion. It's a way of life. 
You see, he's building an airport, so he's talking about his passion for planes. It's pretty easy and you can do it too. Let's say you have a project in Paris. Try to find a connection, maybe you used to come here as a child, maybe you have French ancestors, or maybe you just like French culture and ratatouille. But anyway, try to find links, it's gonna make more sense for your client. And let's continue with Lipskin's presentation, who still has a lot to teach us about storytelling. So let's hear what he has to say about his life in Berlin, and let's try to get the connection he's gonna make between his life and the project. I moved to Berlin in 1989 in order to build the Jewish Museum in Berlin. It took 12 years to build that building. So did you think the connection? Because this one was more subtle, I have to admit. So he's telling us that he has been chosen for the most symbolic museum on earth, I would say. The Jewish Museum in Berlin, in Germany's capital. So he's basically showing his portfolio, but look how he carefully only chose one project. Despite that, at the time, he had completed another museum in Germany. He was also working on a Jewish museum in Denmark and a war museum in Manchester. But he didn't mention any of this because the connection between the World Trade Center project and the Jewish museum in Berlin was so strong. It was perfect. They're both museums, they're both memorials, and they're both very symbolic. So he didn't want to dilute this impact talking about other projects. And I often see people, good architects sometimes, when they try to sell their concept, they are showing as much from a project as they can. You've maybe seen that just a list of projects and you don't even know what to look at. And I get it, your project becomes part of you, you spend so much time working on it. So you just want to show them to everyone. It's pretty much like parents who want to show all their baby's pictures to anyone. They're just proud of it. But sometimes it's better to focus on quality over quantity and it's exactly what Lipskin did here. And Lipskin wanted his story to be easy to follow and you should want that too because if you're using past experiences or past projects, only focus on what's bringing value to your story. Just imagine, Lipskin has like dozens of buildings, great buildings, museums he can talk about and he doesn't do it. He just focuses on his story and what's adding real value to it. And look how he continues talking about the Jewish Museum in Berlin and how he's adding more connection to both projects. The Jewish Museum in Berlin. It took 12 years to build that building. The building opened in Berlin on September 11th, 2001. And only a few hours later, I saw, we all saw, attacks on Ground Zero on New York, on America. And I thought hard about what is the connection of the darkness and evil in Europe with the new murderous ideology which had attacked this country? What a perfect transition in his life, isn't it? Lipskind isn't even trying to hide the connection anymore, he's using it. And with the date of the opening which perfectly matches the 9-11 events, it's almost like if Destiny was talking to him. It's almost symbolic. He ends an iconic project and another one needs to be built. So, so far it's a great introduction, but until now he was only talking about himself, about his life, about his projects. But in order to really connect to your audience, you also need to make them feel like you listen to them and you understand them. It's like a conversation. People are going to like you more if you talk about themselves, about what they like, about who they are, and not just about how great you are. So it's what Lipskin is gonna do next. He's gonna talk about his client. In this case, his client is the United States of America and its citizens. And see how he's gonna connect American values. This country. And I thought, what can be done in this site to imbue the site of Ground Zero with the values of America? the values of freedom, of liberty, of a participatory society, of tolerance, of everything that we love and believe in. So this part is amazing because when he was talking about the Jewish Museum, he was talking to the jury. He was telling them, I know how to handle this kind of project, how to handle pressure. But here, he's talking about the values. He's talking about the client of his client. And in this case, the jury isn't the final client. The jury is just here to represent American citizens. And he understood that. So he's speaking to Americans, to who they are and what they believe in. And this is a very important notion here. You should always remember who is your client, who is your real client, who the jury is working for. Sometimes it's for themselves, mostly for private projects. In the case, a guy who wants to build his house, there's no question about that, it's his own client. 
but for public projects, the jury usually has someone else to please. I'll give you an example on that. In my company, a couple of months ago, we had a project for the Olympic Games in Paris 2024. So we really wanted to win this one. And we ask ourselves, before everything, who is the jury working for? Because the jury was mainly composed of politicians from the city and from the state. But we knew that the city and the jury had a lot of pressure coming up from the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, that wants everything to be perfect according to their criteria. And if it's not, the event just won't take place in the stadium we are going to build. So in our project, we are not only trying to please the city and the state, but we also talk a lot in our presentation about the fact that our project respects very precisely what the IOC asks for. And this technique probably helped us since we just learned last week that we want a competition. So always remember who you are designing for, it's really for yourself. It can be for the jury itself, but it can also be for the jury's client. And in Lipskin's case, it's even harder because he doesn't have one person to please, not even one company. He has to please the whole country with citizens that are different and have different needs. But managed to do it in a very smart way by going from Republican values, like freedom, he's talking about freedom, liberty, and then it shows words that connect more to Democrats, like tolerance. And what's funny, and it shows that he's aware of what he's doing, is that he ends his sentence with everything you love and believe in, in case you haven't felt connected to the word he used before. So he really wants everyone to feel included, and he really wants to make everyone feel like he's the right guy. It's the guy that understands them. He's, so he's going to end the first part of his presentation, still not talking about the project, but by reminding us that he's a true New Yorker and he's going to give us details so we can really picture his life in New York and understand that he knows the city and he knows what he's talking about. Of everything that we love and believe in. Well, I started not by going to a library and reading a book, not by going to the archives, but really retracing my own path to New York. I was an immigrant to New York as a 14-year-old my parents worked in the sweatshops of New York. My brother-in-law worked in those towers for the Port Authority. And I went to school around the corner at Cooper Union where I saw the towers being built. We often used to go to that site. You see, it's amazing how he's still adding pieces of information again and again to make himself look like the only guy on earth that can manage and design this project. It's like if all his life was preparing him for this specific moment. So I think that now you understand that if you can add a piece of your life to the project, you should do it and you should talk about it. You can have different stories depending on the project. You have and add a lot of passion. I'm sure you've maybe lived in different cities, different countries, you met dozens of people. So you can just pick the piece of information you need to build the perfect story. And it's exactly what Lipskin did. You might think that he was lucky to have such a perfect story that matches the World Trade Center project. But no, 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 in reality, he just chose the right pieces of information in his resume and he put it out there and created a story that matches the project. Just to show my point, let's see in the following clip how he's using a completely other part of his life and I am pretty sure he used this part when competing for the Jewish Museum in Berlin. I was born in dark times. I lived under a totalitarian government, under communism. We were Jews and the Semitism was very pervasive. There was darkness all around. I lived in a void. We had no family left. Uh, and yet, my parents, and you have to talk about your parents, my mother, my father, were not just victims. They had their own personalities. They, they were survivors in the true sense of outliving their murderers, their attempted murderers. See, it's a completely different story. It doesn't even sound like the same guy, actually. So I'm not saying that if you have a story that matches the project, you're going to win. And if you don't, you're going to lose. Of course, it's not that simple. But what's for sure is that if you have a story, if you can connect your life to the project, it's going to make more sense for your clients. It's going to improve your chances of success. And mostly in an art world like architecture, where art is subjective, people have feelings about art, but then never really sure if it's good or not. So a client, a jury, then it proves hints to know what to choose. And looking like the most studied guy or girl for a specific project, having a story related to the city, to the building, is one of the best proof you can show your client once they are facing uncertainty. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and let me know in the comment section what you think about this technique. So this is the first video of this channel. And my goal with this channel is to teach you all these little tricks architects uses that can increase the perceived value of your projects, therefore increasing your chances of success. So if you want to see more of this content, please subscribe, click the bell so you don't miss the next videos. See you.